In this video, we'll be taking a look at how we can recolorize the theme of Cubase. I'm also going to show you one hidden function of the color picker and also a couple of different ways we can easily copy color settings across onto different elements. Here in the main project window of Cubase, if we want to customize the various different elements and their colors, we need to head to the preferences menu. To do this, go to edit, then preferences. If you're on Mac OS, it's studio, then preferences. With the preferences window open, head to user interface and you'll see that there are six sub menus for various different things that allow us to control the color settings for them. The first one we're going to focus on is color schemes. Now at the very top here, we have one called custom color scheme and a box next to it. If you click on this box, it will open up the color picker and the color picker will allow us to choose whatever color we want to apply to the overall look of Keybase. There are four presets by default. For example, we could change the overall UI's color to this light gray here and click OK and you'll notice how it's changed. But if we open up the color picker again for the color schemes, we could also use this RGB slider to choose a color. And then in the center window, we have this little node we can drag around. If you move it upwards, it's going to increase brightness. If you move it downwards, it's going to decrease brightness. If you move it to the left, it's going to desaturate the color. If you move it to the right, it's going to saturate the color more. So for example, we can pick this nice lavender purple and we can apply it to the overall theme of Cubase if we wish. However, I want to go for something a little bit more gray. I don't know, around here, like so. While we're talking about the general color theme of Cubase, something to note with the brightness and darkness for a shade is that it will affect the text and tools depending on how bright or dark it is. So if the theme is really dark, the text for certain elements such as these boxes will be made white and the tools will also be white. Now, if we increase this value to somewhere between 24 to 30, it'll invert the text to black and keep the tools white. If we increase this further to something a lot brighter, then it will also make the tools dark as well as the text. I'm going to decrease this to something a little bit darker like so, and that'll do for now. This next one is called Focus Color. Now you'll notice in the main project window of Cubase, you have this little gray outline to the different windows here and we can change the color of that. So when we have one of these selected, we can easily see that we have it selected. Let me change this to something really obvious like red, then click apply and okay. Now you'll see here that the main project area is selected. We can see the lower zone mix is now selected, inspector, channel, and our media tab. The project area background, this is where all of our audio and MIDI events live and we can change the color of this background. Open up the color picker and then just choose your color. Now something to know is that we don't have the RGB slider so if you do want to choose a different color, you'll need to play around with the red, green and blue values here. However, there is another way we can do this which I will touch on later when we get to that hidden function. For now, I'm going to make this a fairly light gray, like so. And then you'll also notice next to project area background, we have this little plus symbol. If we click on this, it will give us two additional options to change the color of the cycle region. So when left and right locators are set, the selection in between is highlighted and you can see it's this pinkish color we can change this to, I don't know, something a little bit darker than the project area background like this gray. That's quite nice. And I'll leave it at that. Now grid lines are the vertical and horizontal lines in the project area. Again, we can change the color of these. I can make these a little bit darker and they now stand out just that bit better for me off the main background. Editor area background will have the same set of controls that we have for the project area background. 
If I want to choose a color for the editor area, again, just open the color picker and choose it like so. You could have it different to the main project background. But if you want the settings to match exactly the same, then this is how you would go about copying them across in this menu. I'm going to open up the project area color picker and then press Ctrl and C to copy that color setting. Then open up the color picker for the editor area and press Ctrl and V to paste. And there you go, that's how you can copy that across. Now this is going to segue nicely into that little function I teased you with at the very intro of this video. Instead of using Ctrl and C to copy the color settings across, I'm going to open up the project area background and then I'm going to open up the color picker for the editor area background and its cycle region. Now, if you move the cursor outside of the color picker window, it doesn't matter if you hold any of the following keys. Shift, Control, Alternate or Command. It'll change the cursor to a crosshair, but only when outside of the color picker. This works like an eyedrop tool, as you would find in photo editing software. So if I was to now click on this red for the arm track for record, and I wanted my cycle region to match that color, then I can. However, I don't want to do that. I want it to match the same color setting as the cycle region in the main project. So again, I'm going to hold that alternate and click on there and it will now copy that color across. And I can do the same for the grid lines as well. It's just a quicker way to copy your color settings. Next, we can have a play around with the ruler background for the key editor and main project window. So we can make it a little bit lighter. We can add a tint of blue or we can make it this sensual red. No, let's turn that off. Um, now, in active cycle, that is when your loop mode is turned off. We can make this darker. Um, now, something to note again with this is if you go too dark, it'll also invert the color to white. So let's make that a little bit lighter to make it black. There we go. And then active cycle, this is when you've got loop mode turned on. We'll have this bluish purple tinted color and reverse cycle. This is when your left and right locators are inverted. Just to give you a quick example, let me just spin these around. That's a reverse cycle, so we can change the color of that. Finally, the last one you can play around with here is the independent track loop, and that pretty much covers it. Next up on the list is track type default colors. If you create a track in Cubase, whether it's MIDI track, audio track, instrument track, etc., you can actually predefine the color the track will be every time you create it. So for example, if I want any MIDI tracks I create to be this yellow, I can set it up here, and then every time I create a track, it will be that exact same shade. Now, if you want to copy this shade across to the other track types, you can click and hold, and then drag and drop it directly onto the next type, like so. Mix console fader colors. Now in the preferences, this allows us to change the color of fader caps for all the different types of channel in Cubase. For example, I can drag and drop this red over to the MIDI channel to change the color or manually pick one. What I like to do though, when working on a color theme is to open up the floating color palette by holding Control, Shift and C and then you can use this as your palette for using the eyedropper tool of the color picker to set different colors for your interface. So for example, if I want to make this a different green, I can, I can then copy this over to all the different channel types like so, and there we go, we have a bunch of nice green faders. Next, we can take a look at the mix console section colors. Now I'm not going to cover all of these because there's quite a few, but I'll cover the most obvious ones. For example, the EQ for the channel editor. We can change the color of this, let's make it green. If we then want to change the pre and post filters from this red, we can then select pre and post filters and use the color picker function again to change it to a more turquoise green. If you want to change the color of your insert plugins pre-fader, then we can do so in the same manner. Let's make them purple. And just for the sake of it, let's do one last one for pan and change this to purple. So our pan headers are now purple. 
you get the idea. I mean, the customization is there and there's plenty you can play around with. When working in the main project or mixer of Cubase, anytime you select a track or channel, you might find the selection not quite bright enough. So if you go back to preferences, then under track and mix console colors, you'll see this sliding bar at the top, which we can use to increase or decrease brightness. Something to note, if you increase the brightness too much, the text will not invert to black on the track. So just be aware, otherwise you might not be able to read what you're looking at. If you would like to colorize all of your tracks in the rack, check tracks, then click apply. And as you can see here, they are now colorized. If you would like this behavior to act on folder tracks as well, then make sure you check folder tracks, then click apply. And as you can see here, it's now done the same. We can also increase the color strength or decrease the color strength like so. If you want to colorize the channels of your mix console, then check the box and click apply. And there you go. Now we've got this lovely piss colored mixer. Finally, we can change the color of the selection from white to the channel color itself, um, which I don't really tend to use. I much prefer to have it as white if I'm honest, but the options there if you want to use it. Well, I think we're going to wrap things up there for now. I mean, this video is starting to get pretty long and even I'm f***ing bored of listening to myself over and over for hours on end. I know we've glossed over certain things in the name of trimming the fat to save time. If you do want me to go into more detail with stuff, then just leave me a comment in the box below. And I am going to do a separate video on colorizing meters inside of Cubase. I just didn't want to put it in on this video because it's already pretty lengthy. So with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you all soon.